I'm speaking in the enzyme targeting section, but I'm actually talking about the RNA target, but I think, still think it fits because we are trying to target it specifically these RNA molecules with a goal to develop antibiotics. So the particular um, RNA we are interested in is called riboswitches. So what is a riboswitch? A riboswitch uh, consists of two domains. We have an aptomere domain and an expression platform. And the aptamere domain can determine, the conformation of the aptamere determines if the gene expression of the, uh, the expression of the following genes is switched on or off. So this is an example of an off ribose switch. So if no metabolite is bound to this aptamere domain, then the gene expression is switched on. But if a metabolite is binding, the aptamere changes the conformation from a terminator loop here in the expression platform and the the expression of the following genes is switched off. There's also off ribose which which just work the other way around. So no metabolite binding, the gene expression is switched off, you bind the metabolite, and then the gene expression is turned on. So these ribose switches are actually relatively widespread in bacteria. So it's believed uh, that about 2% of the genes in Bacillus septalis, for example, are regulated by a ribose switch. And since we can um, influence the gene expression by binding of small molecules, they are believed to be interesting targets for antibiotics. And that's why we are interested in, in targeting the ribes, which is a goal to develop new antibiotics. There's uh, quite a few crystal structures of different ribes, which is, uh, have been determined. So this is an example of the adenine ribes, which has a rather small binding site. And this is an example of a TPP ribes, which this has a rather large binding site, which resembles also uh, protein binding sites, which are used for drug targets. And the, the main approach we use in my group for discovery of new ligands is a structure-based approach. So in general, what we do is often we use molecular docking, so just to illustrate this here. So we start with a 3D structure of the target. Then we, we place a small molecule in the binding site with the help of a docking program. We do this computationally. We try to predict the binding mode of the small molecules. And uh, also we try to estimate the binding affinity of this uh, small molecule with a scoring function. And we can do this not only with one molecule, but we can sequentially place lots of molecules in the binding site. So there's no problem to do this with hundreds of thousands of molecules. And what we get of this is then that we get the predicted binding mode of all of these molecules in the database and we get the predicted binding affinity. So we get the hit list, which we can order by the score. And if this works well, then the, the compounds which have a high score should be the ones that bind. Then we can either purchase or synthesize the compounds that are predicted to bind, test them in the lab for the binding affinity. And ideally, we would also like to get the crystal structure again of the small molecule in the complex with our target to see if the molecule binds as we predicted and also to generate ideas how to optimize uh, this, uh, this molecule. Okay, this is uh, the approach that we use. It's a well-established approach for protein, but we now wanted to apply it to the RNA field to try to develop new ligands for the ribose switches. So before, therefore, before working with the, um, with the complex or more complex binding site, we first wanted to test the docking approach with a more simple test case to know if, if a modified method would actually work for RNA ligand docking. So we turn to the adenine ribose switch, which is, as I said, it's a rather small binding site. There were quite a, uh, a number of compounds known that would bind or not bind to the adenine ribose switch, and there were also three crystal structures with different ligands known. So that's what we use as a test case when we, to test our adapted docking method, how well it works with RNA. So the, the, determining the, the binding modes computationally was quite easy. So we, when we took out the small ligands of the binding site docked and in, we actually got the right uh, binding conformation. The next test was to see how well we can separate known binders from known non-binders. So we docked the, uh, about 23 compounds where we knew if they would bind or not and ordered them by score. And everything here shown with black letters are ligands or compounds that were known to bind to this ribose switch. And everything that was uh, with red letters here was known not to bind to the ribose switch. And we can see that we actually got a quite good separation but we also had uh, two compounds where the predictions didn't hold on. And since we used a simple test system, we could then actually quite easily understand what went wrong. So we had issues here with the tautomer prediction, and this ligand displaced the water molecule in the binding site, which we didn't consider. But overall, it worked quite well. And then the next test we did was uh, the most stringent test for most stringent test for a docking program, is that we took a, a library of compounds which have not been tested before, docked them all in the binding site, and scored them and got the, some of the most high scoring and see to see if they would bind. 
So this is the five compounds that were predicted to bind to the, or some of them they were predicted to bind to the, to the ribose, which we pressed these five compounds and tested them for binding. And indeed, four out of these five uh, turned out to bind, which is a very good result in, in docking the, these four uh, two positive predictions out of five. And for three of them, we could also determine the crystal structures of the ligands in complex with the adenine ribose, which, and the binding modes also made sense, which we predicted. So we were happy, very happy with the results of the docking approach we established. And then we were confident enough to use this approach now for a more complex binding site of an RNA ribose switch, which we believe is to be an interesting tuck target. And the ribose switch we focus in the group at the moment is the FMN ribose switch. So this is the, the natural ligand to this ribose switch, the FMN. And this, this ribose switch has been shown to be a potential target for antibiotics. For example, about uh, two years ago, researchers from Merck uh, published this compound ribosyl. They found it in a phenotypic screen, and it turned out that this has uh, antibiotic activity, and it's most likely to do uh, binding to this FNM riboswitch. The crystal structure of FMN riboswitch with the ribosyl loss with the FMN is also determined. It's been determined, so we could use this uh, crystal structure now for our undocking approach with a goal to find new ligands. So we docked then a, a large library of uh, like almost 100,000 molecules into the, into the binding site. And the most interesting compound we came up with was this one here. We could experimentally confirm that this compound is, is binding to the ribose switch. So we have uh, ITC data, also titration calorimetry data. So if we titrate the FMN uh, just straight to the ribose switch, we get, the, we get tight binding of the FMN. But if we add this compound to the mixture, then the binding affinity of the FMN is, is um, reduced, which indicates that this compound is binding. So it has about a binding affinity of 250 micromolar. Elima has now uh, established uh, a synthesis to this compound so that we can uh, synthesize it in large quantities, and also that we can uh, change the, some, some groups here to probe the structure activity relationships with a goal to improve the affinity of the compound, and also just to learn more about the the, um, how, how ligands bind to RNA in general. So to sum this up, we established a docking protocol for RNA ligand docking. This protocol was very successful uh, with the model binding site to predict new ligands. And some of them were actually also based on scaffolds that were previously not known to bind to this uh, ribose, which was always a very good result in docking if you can uh, predict something that's not very obvious. And then we used this uh, method for the discovery of FM and ribose switch ligands. And this ligand serves now at the starting point to explore the, the chemical space of ribose switch ligands and also as a starting point for the development of new antibiotics. So um, Peter Dalburn, the people listed here, they did the mainly the work with the, with the adenine ribose switch. Thomas did the virtual screening for the FNM ribose switch. And Ilima Rekan, together with Seishan, they um, established the resynthesis of the compound and they work in the group of our collaborator, Bengt Erik Hauk, also here from the University of Bergen. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ruth, for this uh, interesting talk. Nice technology. Questions? Yes, please. Um, the problem of ribose switch targeting antibiotics is they are easily mutatable and the cell become resistant to it. So uh, in your modeling of docking of these antibiotics, do you target on the conserved region of the ribose switches or do you just care on the binding at all? So, I mean, we, we just predict the binding to the binding site in the abdominal region. So um, the mutations occur, can occur in several places, I think, of the of the ribosyl, that's what they found at least with the ribosyl compound. But I mean, I think the call is still open how easily they mutate in the real, in the real setting. I mean, when, when, they, when they tested this with the ribosyl, I mean, they were, they were searching for, for the mutation rates and they also could show that it varies from different species. So it's not the same for each riboswitch and each, uh, for the same, and the FMM riboswitch does not mutate easily. Um, the mutation rate for different FM and virus, which from different species, is not the same. So it is. I think it is still needs more in investigation. How how this really is the, the problem of resistance development with the virus, which but we don't consider it particularly in our docking approach. 
Any final question? Yes, please. How accurate are your predictions in terms of the absolute affinity for your ligands? I thought most computational programs have an error of a kilocalorie per mole, which is almost a factor of 10 in affinity. Yeah, we have the same. It's much easier to predict the binding modes than the affinity. I think if you want the affinity prediction, it's more the... I mean, we use very good uh, docking, like a force field based scoring function. If you want to get the better affinity predictions, we have to go more high level technique like free energy perturbation methods or the things like that. We haven't tried that, but I think if you go forward now in, in designing analogs, it would be good to, to use also more, accru more accurate but slower methods. Okay, then Ruth, thank you once again. Can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.